This armor is part of our identity. It makes us Mandalorians who we are. I personally find the Mandalorians to be an incredibly interesting clan, a faction joined by a common culture that in this case happens to be warlike, and it's that warlike element that we're going to have a look at today. Hey noble ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. The Mandalorians have a very specific kind of armor. Traditional Mandalorian armor consisted of a helmet, shoulder pauldrons, van braces, breastplate, codpiece, knee pads, thigh and shin guards over a body stocking. It is stylish, but most importantly, very, very effective and functional. As regular viewers of this channel will already know, functionality, shape, design are all intertwined naturally, inherently, when talking armor. So in this video, I'd like to pose some really nerdy questions. Why does the Mandalorian armor, and most specifically on this video, the Mandalorian helmet, look the way it does? What are the outside pressures and forces that influenced its development? Now, in order to answer this question properly, we are going to dive into Star Wars lore, and it's going to be a lot of fun, but we will also see some possible equivalents and comparisons with real medieval Europe. Now, you know we're once already familiar with this, but this is a late 15th century Italian bar butte. And I believe that the bar butte, the medieval Italian bar butte, is probably the sort of historical helmet that the Mandalorian helmet was mapped on. Bear with me for a moment. And it's interesting because T-shaped visored bar buttes also existed in medieval Europe, I still don't have one, yet. This is a Mandalorian helmet, very recognizable for its T-shaped visor plate. But throughout Star Wars history and lore, we can see there are, uh, for example, uh, different colors, but we also have several possible shapes. Like if you look at this sort of Mandalorian helmet, then you can immediately see the resemblance with my specific design, which is called the Y-shaped. Well, the helmet that you're looking at belongs specifically to the Death Watch's female warriors, who wore a different set of armor, immediately recognizable. I find it kind of funny, actually, the fact that the Y-shaped one that I've got, probably if I were to be teleported into the Star Wars universe from the point of view of a Mandalorian man, well, it would look rather feminine. Yeah, I should keep the beard. Let's drink to beards. This video is sponsored by, I'm joking. <laughs> Okay, so what other similarities do we find in this medieval design with the Mandalorian design? Well, we've got a main protective element, which in the case of this helmet, it's a heat-treated steel, which was basically the best you could have at the time. So the best that money could afford as far as medieval war tech was concerned. And then you've got this opening here. Now, this design of helmets in real medieval Europe was only used in Italy. Uh, basically, Germans didn't like it, French didn't like it, English didn't like it, broadly speaking. And it was mostly used for light cavalry action rather than full cavalry action, and that is because, of course, it's less protected than other helmets that would completely encase the head of the wearer, which were more effective for full shock cavalry action. The weak spot of this helmet, obviously, it's going to be the opening here, which provides ventilation so you can breathe and good vision. Well, a similar thing can be said about the Mandalorian helmet. I mean, at the end of the day, we see that the main skull of the helmet is made of one material, but the faceplate that you've got underneath is made of a different one, which I would imagine is less protective. You mop it. Uh, although it probably grants perfect vision within the actual lore of the Mandalorians, there are a lot of interesting fun facts to say on this video. But we do know that the faceplate does provide thermal vision and macro binocular viewplates, tactical heads up displays, com links, even holo imager. All of these things can be added. This is really high tech in the terms of the Mandalorians, of course, but it's interesting that I also find some design choices that again we find back into the medieval period. For example, Example. Some helmets that had some hinges, they would have them exposed, but other times hinges on the sides of helmets were protected, encased into protective metal caps, and this happens as well with the Mandalorian. I would imagine that, again, what we see on the sides is a protection of rather critical technological add-ons that give you extra features in combat. That's really cool. Like, really. 
But what was it made of? And what was Mandalorian armor supposed to protect you from? Well, to answer these questions, I'm going to ask the man, the one and only Shad from Shad Diversity Channel. Hey Metatron, thank you for asking me these uh, very important questions and reaching out to me, uh, I, I can understand why, because there's no one in the world who knows Star Wars more than me. I know about everything, okay? Millennium Sparrows, I got it, got it all, all right? And the Jedi Warriors, not a problem. And so when we are talking about the Mandalorian, well that's one that I've done extra research on to answer these questions. In fact, I've already visited a couple of these topics myself. And the two questions you have, all right, as to what is the Mandalorian's helmet made out of and what was it intended to do? What was it made for, okay? Two very crucially important questions. Now, I have watched The Mandalorian, which makes me an expert, as I already said. Probably one of the best experts in the world. It's debatable, all right? Uh, no, actually, it's not debatable. But anyway, so after watching The Mandalorian, we know that it's made out of Beskar, okay? Which is a near indestructible material. In fact, lightsabers, if it's pure Beskar, lightsabers can't even chop through it. So that's significant. One of the uh, interesting uh, bits of information about Beskar is that it's supposed to be heavy, yet Mandalorian, when he's wearing it, doesn't seem to be impeded by the weight. And so that could mean it's very thin in the helmet, but however thick it is, it doesn't seem to be heavy enough to impede his mobility, and it's uh, thick enough for it to have the full defensive capacity. And so Beskar, near indestructible. Uh, the next thing, what was it made for? Well, you have to dive into the deep Mandalorian lore to figure that out. And uh, there's a couple of, you know, questions you could, uh, ways you could look at it. On a surface level, it was made to defend against blaster fire. And if you look at Star Wars, it's interesting to see that, well, uh, sometimes armor, like what the stormtroopers use, is garbage. And so, is that because the armor's bad or the blasters are particularly powerful? Hard to tell. He has also worn armor that was made out of Durasteel and not Beskar, which also protected against blaster fire, which makes you wonder why the stormtroopers aren't wearing it. But it wasn't as good as Beskar. So primarily, the Beskar Mandalorian is wearing at the moment is made to defend against blaster fire, and that means his helmet. Now, some people will say, well, it was also made to defend against the Jedi. And that's true, the Mandalorian has had a war with the Jedi some 4,000 years ago in, in the Star Wars timeline. And a lot of their weapons and armor were developed specifically to combat the Jedi. Which kind of makes sense, because if Durasteel is effective enough to defend yourself against blaster fire, why are they going the extra mile to make Beskar? And the answer is Beskar's even stronger. Uh, as we see in The Mandalorian, he can take a, a higher powered blaster, like sniper shot, in the chest, and he wasn't even sure if Beskar could protect him against that, but it did. And we could assume Durasteel doesn't. And so again, Beskar is even better than Durasteel, but because the Mandalorians also fought against the Jedi so actively in the past, a lot of their weapons and armor were specifically developed to fight Jedi and the greater Republican army as well. But the Mandalorian's helmet well, in the current time period, the Mandalorian doesn't even know who the Jedi were, yet they're still making their weapons and armor out of Beskar if available. And that brings us back to the main reason as to what the uh, helmet was designed to do, would be to protect against blaster fire with this tradition of, if they ever came across Jedi, it would protect them against Jedi weapons, lightsabers as well. And so that is the answer that only the most versed Star Wars expo experts will know and really anyone who's watched The Mandalorian as well, and, and done a surface level looking in some of the resources. But look, all right, hey, I'm Star Wars expert, okay? Hey, Shad, you are the man. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, it's great to have you here on the channel. And he brought some interesting points that I would like to underline and examine. So now we've got some new data. Let's see what we can speculate from it. Okay, so now we understand that the overall bulk of both the helmet of a Mandalorian and the rest of his armor will be made of this Beskar, at least for those who could have access to it. And that this Beskar, this sort of material, this Mandalorian iron, this 
alloy, as it is called, has a notable tolerance to extreme forms of damage. This metal is durable enough to resist direct lightsaber contact. Now that is of course revolutionary. It would have been revolutionary. I don't think you, there is any other material that can resist a lightsaber, which was really the super weapon of the Jedi Knights. Also, weight is interesting because, as Shad said, it's supposed to be heavy, and yet we know for a fact that for the Mandalorian the armor is not a problem. In fact, here's another interesting quote. My armor is like my second skin. I'm being serious. Sometimes I totally forget I even have it on, and I fall asleep in it. Okay, so this means that no matter the weight or the intrinsic mass of a of Beskar made items, probably because of an extremely effective and functional design, the armor has excellent weight distribution. This paired probably with this other possible factor. Remember that sometimes we see that the Mandalorians have got magnetized feet. They use many models of jetpacks, including, according to law, Z6 and JT12. So, since we are looking at a fantasy, I think it is important to look at it not only from the perspective of the material and the shape it has, but also from the perspective of high-tech, which would increase maneuverability in combat and also allow some Mandalorians to fly. So, we understand that Beskar is durable enough to withstand direct blaster shot, and we also know that it can repel a lightsaber strike. So, how can you defeat Beskar. Well, according to the law, there is actually a way, a super weapon that can deal with Mandalorian armor. And we are talking about a super weapon that was created and designed specifically for the Galactic Empire, the Arc Pulse Generator. The Arc Pulse Generator is capable of superheating Beskar to the point that it would burn to a crisp everything it was protecting including the Mandalorian warrior encased within it. Another fun fact, in ingot form, Beskar has a silver appearance with wavy patterns, which is reminiscent of crucible steel. All right, noble ones, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Usually I don't talk much about pop culture. I used to, but now I kind of do it less. But I decided, you know what? The Mandalorians are just too great. I really want to talk about them again. Big thanks to Shad from Shad Diversity Channel. He's got quite a few videos on the Mandalorians, so definitely go and check them out. And if you really are into the Mandalorians and you want to know every single possible detail, I also strongly suggest the videos on the, the again, Mandalorian armor and weapons made by my friend Matt Easton at Scholar gladiatoria so lots of very interesting links in the description below thank you so much for watching number one and remember the metatron